Hello and welcome back to Spartan Stories. Uh, we are very excited to have our very own coach, Lori Bird, with us. Um, coach Bird has been our head coach for the, of the women's basketball program for the last three to four years. Hard to, hard to count with, with the <laughs> pandemic in the middle. <laughs> um, but Coach Bird has just a tremendous resume of playing and coaching and just an incredible uh, I'm sure many incredible stories. So we're lucky to have you, Coach. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And uh, the, the, you know, the point of Spartan Stories is always to tell the stories of um, our student athletes. But we've also um, started to to dive into our coaches and and what brought them here and what experience and knowledge they have um, based on kind of where they've been. So I think it's going to be really cool to hear uh, about your 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 path and your story. So. Uh, I think an easy place for us to start would be to tell the the viewers a little bit about um, your family and how you grew up and where you were and 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 what that was like and and what you learned through it. Yeah. Oh man. I'm, I I grew up from Flint, Michigan, and uh, in a family of eight kids, a very athletic family. Uh, my dad was a prize fighter, USA coach. Um, coach at the uh, amateur and pro level. My mom was uh, probably the first, I think, uh, in Michigan to be a, um, a licensed uh, boxing coach. So she coached amateur and pro and, and the second in the United States to, to be an, um, a boxing coach and being able to coach at the, at the amateur and pro level. All my brothers and sisters, is, I have five brothers, uh, three sisters. They all was uh, very um, athletically inclined. Uh, my two older brothers, they box uh, in high school. They played bat all the sports, basketball, football, and uh, and ran track. Um, could have actually went to college, but decided just to go into another career. Since my mom and dad were boxing coaches, they end up being a boxing coach. I was the third oldest of eight, uh, played basketball from, oh, as long as I can remember, from middle school on um, at every level. And my sister, I have another sister that, uh, and, and another younger brother, they boxed, but uh, they ran, my sister under me ran marathons and she still run marathons to this day. Um, my sister, uh, Tracy went on to college too, like myself and played basketball. And she also boxed, um, has three belts and three different weight classes. And I have a brother uh, under me, under her that fought um, at the highest level. I think he, at one time he was, probably um, maybe number two in the country at the time in boxing, his weight class, little guy, one, one twelve. Oh, wow. And then my two younger brothers also, they box and they were very, very successful, especially my baby brother, Chris. He had went on to win, uh, went on to um, fight in the Olympics and won a silver medal, medal along with my dad as his coach and uh, was a three-time world champion. So um, we're going to hear a lot about the success you had personally in basketball, but you, I hear a, a, the the common thread or theme is, is boxing in, in that family and your family. And so while we're on that, being around boxing and probably having boxer trained as a boxer or, or been around trainers yourself, what do you think you had that maybe other basketball players didn't have like what do you think brought boxing brought to you as an athlete that translated into your career man one the toughness uh the training was is off the chart i say it's one of the best and it helped me along the way i think i was um i had a a, a step or two above everyone especially probably in my age group in the high school level because i trained i did road work uh with the boxing with my dad and the family we were on the road a lot running I uh, did a lot of road, road work, um, which I love running. I mean, that's probably my first love. And then I think that just the toughness, being in the gym, being able to go through the boxing stuff. I was able to train, get inside the ring, and do some uh, a little bit of boxing. And um, just the just that hard toughness of just being, um, you know, going through that training. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, okay, so great. So you grew up big family. You're in Flint, Michigan. You're boxing and playing basketball and running and um, talk a little bit about high school and then college and um, where did you play and what did you learn from it? Uh, who were your role models? Uh, what type, you know, 
did you win some championships and whatever whatever might fall into that that's yeah story. our whole high school um um uh, was able to play varsity in my freshman year um went on in my junior year I started getting better and better I remember stories about playing with my brother uh back then um trying to improve to get better um um had several accolades in my junior and senior year didn't really know about the college scene then but I knew that I could get a scholarship my senior year uh it was someone that I I, I want to say his name is Ed Phillips he's a, a news writer um in our um uh channel 12 back then uh, when I grew up, uh, came up to me and said that he was getting people calling into him, asking about me playing at the next level. So he came to me and said, hey, you want to play at the next level? And I was like, playing at the next level? I didn't even know you could play at the next level college basketball. Because back then in that era, you know, I was just playing in the sport just because I enjoy playing yeah. uh, basketball. So I went on from there being an all-stater um, in high school lead my team every year in scoring. I think I averaged, uh, my highest probably was 30 a game. Wow. Uh, playing and realized I could get a scholarship. So Eastern Michigan reached out and I had a chance to go visit, loved it. As soon as I walked on campus, I loved the coaches, uh, staff, loved the campus. Um, then went on from there, um, playing at the college level, the collegiate level and doing that era, how they have now, they didn't have, um, uh, conferences back then uh, we played everybody and oh, everybody wow. community college was good they were loaded we played everybody uh, back then but each year I end up being all state my first three years and then my senior year finally through title nine NCAA came along and I was able to play in the mid-american conference uh -huh. and, um, um, went on there was uh, the leading score I think I was probably 13 in the country 23 a game Wow. Um, and then went on from there, from being a, a all state um, and uh, being uh, Vince and I went on to play professionally. My first stunt was in Chicago, played with the Chicago Spirit. Then actually didn't think that they had another level then for women's basketball. So had an opportunity to be one of the uh, top picks for the Chicago Spirit, led them in scoring. I guess I think they got on record that I was the first one to ever score in the league. Wow. Uh, end up, um, being the top scorer in that league. And that led me to get an agent to go overseas and, and blessing being, being um, able to have an opportunity to go overseas where things were paid for. I didn't have to pay for the travel, uh, living expenses, um, was able to play overseas. I played over in uh, Sweden for three years. I went to Italy, uh, played there a year, Spain, a stunt and um, Switzerland. I ended up playing in Switzerland for, for three years as well, and then came back and they wanted to start a, a league that's called the, um, the ABL. So I ended up playing in the ABL, getting uh, drafted by uh, the Atlanta Glory, um, went there to play there and then went on to play for the San Jose Lasers before it folded. And, um, and then from there, went back overseas again and, and played another year um, over in Sweden which led me to start my coaching opportunity. Um, so they had a, um, uh, they started the WNBA. So I went back overseas because um, without being overseas, they wasn't taking players that just coming off the streets. You had to be active. So I decided to go back overseas uh, to play over in Sweden and then came back over and they started the, um, the, um, the WNBA started up. So I got a stunt to play uh, get a, um, Nancy Lieberman at the time with a well-known uh, player, uh, professional player, uh, was coaching for the Detroit Shock. So I had an opportunity to go and um, have a tryout. And at that time, I was 39 years old, probably going on 40. I was the oldest player. I was the oldest player in the ABL at that time, too. But one of the older players that was uh, trying out for the, um, for the WNBA. And, and uh, had a great, I thought I had a great tryout, but um, when it was a time to get uh, for my meeting, she told me that I did everything right. They were just going in a different direction. They just wanted a younger team. Wow. And so that's when I started coaching. All right. Well, let, let's let stay. Let's talk a little more about the playing. Um, looking at each level. So like at high school and thinking about your coach and that environment, college and, and, and what was there? 
what were do you think there were different skills or lessons that you learned at each level along the way that was like a point of emphasis like if you can think about the coaches you played for um and the things they emphasized or or even like along the way into your professional career like how did the game change and and what did you learn from each because each situation sounds like it's quite different right playing in high school um it sounds like you were well, it sounds like you were dominant at every level. Um, but can you talk a little bit about um, the, oh, are you still there, coach? Yeah, it went out though, oh. but I'm still here. Thank oh, you. sorry, sorry. Um, just to, just kind of what you learned at each level specifically, maybe from a coach or maybe just from the experience, um, uh, the differences of each level and the, th the ways you needed to adjust your game or adjust your mentality. Um, talk to any about any of that stuff. On the high school level, I knew because growing up, I played with my brothers and I knew how tough I was in the high school level. I, I didn't know how easy it was going to be playing at the high school level, probably because playing against my brothers and just having that confidence in them and in my family, too. But especially my older brother, he taught me how to play. I just remember playing against him, getting beat up, going home bloody. And uh, he was like, hey, I think you should play basketball because track was my first love. So running, and he said, man, you can always run, just go play basketball. I said, I'm, he was already in the high school level and knew the team then. And he was like, go for the basketball team. You're going to make it, you'll make it. So I, I've learned there at that level um, that I was already pretty much ready mentally a little bit because of yeah. the toughness of my brothers. Yeah. But going to the next level, going in, um, I knew the pace was it. I didn't think the pace was going to be as fast as it was. And the game was more of, you know, back then you can dribble, chew, pass or whatever going in playing, but everybody there was pretty good across the board. Mm -hmm. So when you coming in, you really had to um, compete. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned from there. I knew I competed in high school. I was competing, but it took it to another level. Mm -hmm. I mean, back then you could hand check, you know, you can guard um, players, but you didn't think none of it. But like I said, growing up with my brothers and them, I was prepared for that part of it. But the running part of it, I could run in condition, but the speed of the game was different. And everybody there was very talented. So I knew I had to work hard and keep working, keep grinding. And um, boxing helped me with that too, um, preparing me for that. But I knew that the speed was, and then going into the pros, everybody was all Americans everybody was now it's to another another level and um the mentality was there i was confident enough i think that's the biggest thing with with uh girls and women today is just having that confidence and i knew if i wanted to compete um i had to uh, grind even more grind even more and keep on work and always be and always be in that step ahead and knowing that if i the work ethics that i put into um, and the hard work that i put into um preparing myself for the game um would be good when once I get on once I got on the court. Did you when you were playing professionally, did you have a favorite uh place? Like not team, but just like a favorite country that you really enjoy? Oh, yeah, I love I mean you everywhere I went, they treated me. I mean I, I can honestly say I was treated well. I mean yeah. I was blessed in that aspect. But I thought my heart was um two places. I would say Switzerland because it was my first and we won a championship there too. And, and then, and just how it went because of the story down the line of how it started. But I would say Switzerland when I was in Pui and um, Adrika when I was in Sweden, uh, and I was there for, we, we also was at a lower level, went up to winning the championship and then going to a championship for a higher level. So those two places were, they, they, my heart. That's they, really cool. My heartbeat. All right, now we're going to transition a little bit, but um, this was a, a picture that you share with me. Tell, <laughs> tell me a little bit about this picture um, uh, and uh, what, what, what type of, so, so this is obviously, it's some sort of USA festival. Yeah, um, back, in, yeah. back in that era, they, um, with USA Basketball, I had an opportunity to uh, try out. They had tryouts like in St. Louis. And players from the region came, the Midwest came and tried out. So I was one of 12, or how many they have there, um, was selected to play against. They had the Midwest, they had the East, the South, and the North. And everybody came together 
at the Olympic Sports uh, Center and we we played. So they had all other kinds of sports there too. And that's how this, they selected teams to go on to play. Nowadays, they have FIBA basketball where they have international basketball too. Our team ended up in the championship. We, um, they end up, unfortunately, they only picked the one from our team, but uh, the first team they had in the championship, they had seven and they were taking 12. So, but we, we had a pretty good team. And, and I had, I was blessed and fortunate to be part of this uh, USA team. That's really cool. And it should be noted that uh, in the front row on the very left, Kathy yeah. Boswell was your assistant coach this year. Yeah, yeah, she was my assistant this year. One of the probably most decorated players uh, to ever come out the game. She's getting ready to get inducted to the Women's uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, some pretty good players there. You have uh, to the end there on the far end is uh, Latanya Pollard on on the lower row. Farther in, she was uh, one of the top players in the country too at that time and an All American. Wow, yeah. very cool. All right, fun, fun. That's I love, I love, I love, love my Afro. Huh? I love pictures <laughs> of history. Oh, the Afro is wonderful, <laughs> but I just love historical uh pictures that's not yeah. everyone gets to be in participate in a usa festival and have a chance yeah. to Olympic yeah. team. it was fun it was a great experience i'm glad i had that opportunity um okay so so after your playing career did you consider anything other than coaching <laughs> did you yeah think i you, you know did? i know i didn't i you know no. i you, to me basketball was my world my life. I, and I love working out. So, um, you know, if anything would have probably been personal training, but I never even thought about that. Um, coaching was never in my mind. I should have known because my parents were coaches. I, I should have known they don't far too far from the tree. Yeah. Um, but um, just uh, having a love for the game and just being loyal to the game. And I knew eventually when I, my last stunt, when I was with the um, trying out for the, the Detroit shot, um, they had panels there, people, you know, picking for um, selecting team players for the team and stuff like that. So a reporter came up to me and gave me a slip and it had a person's name on it. And I didn't really recognize it at first because uh, the, the person that I that knew, she played against me in college um, and she ended up getting the job at the University of Detroit. And so her maiden name was uh, her her. Um, was uh, Kish at the time, but this one was a different name. So, and I don't really remember, but anyway, that being said, and they said, call her. Um, she wants you, she's looking for assistant coach and she wants to see if you want to, and she said, she know you. And yeah. I thought, what? So when I called her, sure enough, I knew who it was and I had played against her in college and, um, and I'm glad I did. And, um, and I went from there. And so that's where you started your coaching. I started my coaching, yeah. So yeah. University of Detroit. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Started there, was there three years. And then um, when I was there, then Bill Lambeer ended up getting the job with the Detroit shop. And he wanted, he wanted to bring in coaches, but he also wanted to bring in coaches that were pretty much local. Mm -hmm. And uh, he knew, brought in me and he brought in for an interview and also Pam McGee, which is from Flint, a well-known player at USC, all American, all everything. But he brought both of us in and uh, we interviewed and, um, you know, and then, then that took off from there. And I ended up coaching, yeah, with the Detroit shot for three years as well. And uh, we ended up, that's when we ended up winning the championship. Our first year went from first to worst um, and ended up winning a, a championship uh, my first year. All right. I want to show just a quick picture of that. You recently had a 20 year anniversary. Yeah. That, that, oh. It was so awesome. It was great seeing everybody too. I mean, and how they grew and their families and, you know, it was just so good. It brought back so many memories. It was fun. Yeah. Well, and, and I've, I've read a couple of places and then you just said it, this idea of worst to first. And so um, that I think is when, when coaches take over programs, you often will see uh, great coaches make an improvement in a program, but you'll, you, it's rare to yeah. see a program go from the absolute bottom right. to the championship. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think led to that? What was the makeup of the team? What was the mentality? What was the coaching staff? What was the overriding? Like, why did that happen? Like, what was special about that group that, that you were able to accomplish that? 
Yeah, I think Bill, Bill Lambrio brought in some great pieces, what he needed. You know, he knew he had in swing cash. He had a, a forward slash, you know, three. He knew he had Indiana Nolan probably <laughs> Un, not even mentioned really in the you know you hear about it when they bring up championships but she was from Flint as well uh outstanding shooter um Indiana Nolan and uh he had a point guard too so he had, he knew he needed some bigs so he brought in Cheryl Ford um and Ruth Riley Ruth Riley was 6'6 Cheryl Ford was 6'4 six, six, mm -hmm. uh, brought in some uh pieces and um brought in pieces too and I think with his he's a mastermind like he when he did in love of the game too. Um, for the love of the game, um, wanted to play together, and they didn't care who scored, um, and just brought everything together. The mind was defense first, and then everything else took took took. Um, Took care of itself but I think the biggest thing too was uh you know getting them to play together and yeah. that was that was huge and and when they started doing that um you know we started winning and then they started to believe in yeah and, and that when they started to believe and they knew they couldn't I mean they work I mean we they grind they worked hard in practice they did stuff off the court on the court um they were there for one another in every in every way and I think that was the biggest thing is them being together and believing in one another that was huge got it so with um you mentioned get starting to play for one another right and 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 I think the idea of like really buying in and like mm -hmm. you hear this a lot about about great teams this like right. sac sacrifice yourself for the good of the team is is there something specifically that you think how he how he managed that like you know words that he said themes that he did or was it just a consistent presence of of something daily in practice i think the biggest thing with him he was a, he was a player himself so he was more of a player coach and they were bad boys he was image of bad boys back in the day yeah uh, when he played for the pistons so he used to tell a lot of stories about, you know, how they how hard they played and, and the pieces that they brought in too, and buying into to, to the system too, because they had some great players like Isaiah Thomas, you know, they have they had some great players too. Yeah. So I mean he used to tell a lot of stories. And the biggest thing too, we we had um get togethers too. Um we always had gatherings. Um, um so that that made it that made it um you know, it made it fun. It made it fun for everyone. It wasn't just always basketball too. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we can get caught up just in the game and, and making it like a, it was a job more and stuff, even though they were getting paid. But the passion set in when 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 we started to be there together and, and then buying in, like you said, buying into what um, you know, what he was um Bill Lambeer and the coaching staff were talking about. And then once we did that, I mean, then people started to come and watch. You know, we had fans and after that we had fans, you know, everybody loved a winner, but I think they loved the the product that, that Bill put together too. Yep. Uh, it made a huge difference. Great. Okay. So, so you win a, win a WNBA championship as a coach and then uh, what, where do you go next? Okay. So from there, I decided to take a little break. Uh, my brother, um, my younger baby brother um, was still boxing. And so, and then he started a family. So he moved out to Vegas and usually during the off season, I would come and visit, but then I decided to take a break and help him too, a little bit with his family. He yep. has some little ones and he was always on the road a little bit too. And they did training there too. So I helped out a little bit with that. I was on my dad's staff helping out with the, you know, the little grunt work of the background of the boxing and, uh, but training with them and then um, helping him with his family a little bit. Okay. Uh, he was like on the road him and his wife was on the road that's fantastic so and that's how i ended out here and went out, out in the that's how you got out west that's I got how here I... in vegas vegas started it yeah okay and then was was santa fe christian your next your your next coach yeah my brother moved to then he moved to when he was retired uh he moved to uh he always wanted to be in san diego um so he moved to san diego and i kind of came with them a little bit and uh, I end up I end up going back into the league because Ann Dollarman, um, rest her soul, um, New York. She got the job in New York, 
in the WNBA. And so I went there and started working there too as well, a little wow. bit while okay. he was here. And then when my nephew, uh, when she decided to go um, coach at the college level, that's when I pretty much stopped coaching. And I came back here again in West in San Diego. And my nephew was playing, um, he was a ninth grader at the time at Santa Fe Christian. Um, the first time when I came out, I, you know, I went to watch him play and stuff. And then his sophomore year, and then that's when the um, athletic director there asked me if I was still interested in coaching. And at that time, uh, I think it's, I think it's uh, Justin, my nephew's sophomore year. And I said, no, I'm, I'm still, I'm pretty good. I, I just want to, you know, concentrate on my nephew and come enjoy his games. And then his junior year, they asked me again. And so I said, well, since I'm going to be coming to the games, I was like, I'll give it a try. And then I gave it a try and coached there for eight years. Wow. Eight years. That's fantastic. Eight years. Yeah. Um, Coach, for some reason, I can't, we can't see you anymore. I know. It went black. Huh. Let me, yeah. let me pause just for a second. Okay, coach, we're back. So, uh, so eight years at Santa Fe Christian and talk about what, what were the best parts of that experience and, um, and, and why did you stay so long? What, what did you, what did you like about the environment and, and, and the coaching? Right. Okay. I love the environment because it was a Christian um, based uh, school and I'm a Christian. So I love that environment about it. Um, the te teaching the kids up too, as far as, uh, I knew coming in, we had a, they had eight, probably eight sophomores that was still there and teaching kids up. I love the development of kids and teaching kids up and the middle school too was, um, pretty good too. So I was able to coach middle school. So keep teaching those kids up to come up when those kids. And so then, then other kids started to come in too, but I think the biggest interest was the that the Christian part of it, but kids wanting to play the game, they wanted to play basketball. And I yep. think that was the biggest thing too, that was, they had the passion for it. And that's, that's me. I love the, I love the game and I have a passion for, you know, developing kids and, and, and just getting them on to the next level. So I was able to coach that sophomore class. And then I had a great, I had a pretty good uh, middle school class with uh, that's the time I don't know you remember Chris Dudley that played in the NBA his daughter came in and she was probably the tallest player I would I ever had so even though I had some tall players but she was pretty skilled she's pretty skilled so she came in at, as a seventh grader and so I had a pretty good seventh grade class and so when they were seniors um, what was the eighth, yeah, eighth grade senior class and they when she was a freshman they were seniors. So from there, I had that group. And then I had the group after that yeah. once they left. So we were, we were pretty good. I think, uh, I, I, that too, with the biggest part, I would say that they, they enjoyed the game and that's what, that what kept me there. That long. Well, and what's so interesting, it's, it's quite different than coaching in the WNBA or yeah. you know, professional levels you play. It's a different level of basketball, mm -hmm. but you, you found, you know, value and joy in it yeah. because of what it stood for and because like you said they wanted to be there yeah and then the mentorship of it you know mentoring young kids um you know because once the ball stopped you know what are you doing and and then known there that school too was known academically too so these kids could go on to even if they didn't want to play basketball they could go on you know and go on to college and uh pursue yeah. a career cool yeah. all right and then so we were lucky enough in 2019 uh, we were lucky enough to hire you here. Yes. In your first year, I'm going to share a picture. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Year, the, you coached this okay. team. And I think uh, what hadn't been happened, what hadn't done, been done at Maricosta for, I don't know, a long time, right? Maybe 30 years or something. You won a conference championship. And not only did you win a conference championship, but you were undefeated. You went, I think it was 12 and 0. Um, so, so you made the jump very smoothly from high school back to college. Uh, but talk about this group and maybe some of the memories you have from this team and, and some of the, some of the, um, some of the things that, that maybe stand out for you. Yeah. I just remember coming in for an interview with you, Pat, and you, I thought it was very professional. Uh, the, the steps that you did, the channels, uh, cause I've never came in in a group where yeah, I interview and you brought in 
you know, you brought in the players. So when the players came in, I, I just knew them. They, they knew what they wanted, you know, um, they were eager to play. Um, and then once I ended up getting the job, um, they were very respectful. Um, you know, it took a minute. I didn't say they were, they bought in at the beginning because things have changed. I changed a little bit of stuff, what they were, the norm, the norm, what they so right. used to doing. But um, once they bought in to the process and um, started work, I knew they were hard working kids because once I threw out the ball, let them play a little bit and watch them play. I knew, you know, some pieces that I had some really good pieces. Um, I thought Kai did a great job, you know, um, with this group. Um, and they were very, um, they were very, uh, what do I want to say? They were very, um, they did, did sure about themselves. They were confident, um, very educated um, in the classroom. Uh, but the biggest thing that stuck out more was that how they were together. They, they liked one another. And I think that was the biggest thing for them playing on the court. They, they hung out with one another off the court. If uh, they come in with a day where they wasn't feeling good, someone stepped up and said, hey, we got to, we got to grind. We got to put in the time. We got to put in the work. Um, so, and, but they respected one another as well. So they, they were just something special in that aspect. And then they worked hard on the, in practice and that carried over in the games and during the times when they were down in games, they, we found ways, they found ways to fight back. And our bench was outstanding. You know, we had some players that hardly ever played and they bought in and they, they were, it was all about team. And I think they, that was the biggest part of us winning the championship because of that. That's great. Uh, well, we are very, very lucky to have you as our coach. We're oh, great. I'm blessed to be here. Uh, you mentioned the interview process. What, what stood out for me, um, one of the things you said was that one of your greatest assets as a coach was your patience. Um, talk a little bit about your coaching philosophy and, you know, if, if there's a young, young, young girl or young woman out there that um, decides she wants to try to play college basketball and she, she reaches out and comes to Miracosta, what, what would that experience be like playing for you? Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing too is, uh, you know, that mentorship of, of people, young, young women. Um, uh, I love when you coming in, working hard, grinding, putting in the time and, not making it so much like a job, just enjoying what you do. Um, I grew up from the old school, you know, you respect the game, but you also respect people around you. And I think that's the biggest thing too, for me, is coming in and respecting, you know, and I always say respect is earned, even though the titles that I have or whatever I've done, you still have to, to learn. I, you st I still have to be the person too that to, for you to respect. Yep. And, and that's the biggest thing. So um, a lot of times I just don't like people knowing what I'm doing. I just I just want to come and be that person. I just want to be a person, just a human being to come in to let people know me is me. And, and that's what I like about young kids coming in, let people know who you are, you know, and then you let them know that then, then they'll respect you a little bit more. But I think the biggest thing is just being together as a team and respecting others and then working hard. And I say the biggest thing, too, of, uh, of a young kid that want to play at the next level is, is your character. You know, how you carry yourself is huge. College coaches are always looking at that first because then they have to deal with all that stuff. They don't want to have to come in and have to deal with that. And then working hard. You know, if you love the sport, if you have the passion for the sport, you're going to come in and you're going to work. And sometimes you're working when you're not even a coach, not even around because we'll see it when you come in. But if you have the passion and love for what you're doing, Everything else is going to take care of itself. And then you knowing that you're coming in as, as a student athlete. And I think that's the biggest thing, too, because if you want to get to another level, the grades are got to be the grades has to be first. They have to be the number one. And then, every, you know, you can play basketball. But what about the grades? And I know a lot of college coaches, when I call them up at that next level, at that four year level, first thing they ask me is about the grades, how the grades, how, the, how they how are they in the classroom? And then they want to talk. So I always say, knowing that when you're coming in, you're coming in as a student athlete and you're grinding the same way. So if you're grinding on the basketball court, you're grinding in the classroom and you put that together, the sky's the limit. And then confidence. I think the biggest thing with us girls and women is confidence. Um, but you come in there and have it, you, you, it's a team sport. You can't do it by yourself. 
So if you coming in, we, you're always going to have that someone there for you um, and going to have your back from the top, from the coaches to the managers, to the AD, to whoever around your circle. And if you believe in that, then things are going to be okay. Well, that's great, Coach. Um, the game of basketball is taking you all around the world. <laughs> yeah. You've been a professional. You've, you're a WNBA champion, and we're, we're really uh, lucky. The, the student oh, athletes at Mira Costa are, are lucky to have you here. And uh, I'm lucky to be here. I, I really tell you, I, I am. I'm lucky. I'm blessed. You always know that. I'm blessed. I'm lucky. And I thank you for, you know, being patient with me. I have a lot of patience, but I think you you have patience too, because you got to deal with a, a lot um, going on on campus, but, um, and in your life. And so I, I just thank you for being patient with me and understanding. And I think the biggest thing being helpful and, um, you know, being respectful. And I, and I love that in you. I love yeah, it in thank you. you. Thank you a lot. And so to anyone out there that wants to know more about the Maricosta Women's Basketball Program, you can reach out and contact Coach Bird. Uh, all the information is on our website. It's www.mccspartans.com. And uh, Coach, thanks for the time and all the stories. Thank and you. Thank you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>